Don't tell me what I'll do. What is up, you beautiful people? This is Gary Orton. This is this is the NWA, the podcast celebrating the past, present, future, history, legacy, and tradition of the greatest sports entity of all time, the National Wrestling Alliance. I didn't even stick with pro wrestling there. I just said sports in general. Uh, we're, we're talking the New York Yankees, beyond uh, the Lakers, beyond all of that, beyond the Cubs, the White Sox, and everybody. <laughs> The National Wrestling Alliance. Here we are. <laughs> what, Rob? Rob you I'm about to say it. easy now. John ja, ja is over here. He can hear you. Uh, I wasn't gonna. I wasn't gonna. I wasn't gonna take off Jabu over there. I, I know. We're in a big series with the Mets right now, and I don't need you to upset the baseball gods. But uh, you're right. It, wrestling is the one true sport. Agreed. There oh, you go. man, Jabu, earmuffs. Well, that other voice you're hearing <laughs> is uh, my partner in crime, the PhD of. It, I didn't have anything to ride with it. I wish I, I should have thought of that beforehand. Anyway, there he is, Doc Stinson. Hey, Doc. What's up, guys? Glad to hang out tonight. Favorite night of the week. And that other beautiful face you see over there with the backwards cap, but serious business. That's what it means when he turns that hat around. It's like uh, over the top right. in here. He's getting ready. He turns that hat around, and it's on. And that's Will Martin. Hey, Will. What's up, everyone? Great episode tonight, Rob. I your show in your face that you didn't uh, take the night off in solidarity with the uh, the champ, and I'm sure we'll get into that. But oh boy, bombshell announcement! A lot to talk about. Oh, this was a heck of an episode, fellas. A lot going on here. I'm just excited. I mean, this is one of the episodes that just really makes you proud to be an NWA fan. Personally, just an episode full of professional wrestling, just like we like it. Traditional, old school, Smash Mouth pro wrestling, right in the middle of the ring with some of the best competition that you can get in the sport today. I've been a fan for a long time. Look, look at this. My shirt today. You see that? It doesn't even have a gold globe. That's how long I've been down with the NWA. Rob, don't show me anything under that hoodie. I don't, okay. I don't think this has a gold globe. Wait a second. Yes, yes it, it does. does. See there? Mine's straight. Just all white right there. That's before the big change at 70. So... Oh, oh, all I'm saying, I just love the NWA, love the National Wrestling Alliance, love all of the NWA fam, and uh, just an episode like today just gets my blood going. It just makes me excited, it makes me pumped to be part of this, and so there's a lot to talk about right up top, and uh, we're going to jump into this week's episode of NWA Power, because I know that the doc's going to have plenty to say about it, and uh, so will we, so uh, let's get into it. Um the, th the thing that we've got to hit on right up top is that we open up with Kyle Davis, uh, Joe Galley, and uh, Velvet Sky, of course. We can't forget them, those lovely people. But they throw it over to Kyle, who has a message from our president, Mr. William Patrick Corgan. And um, so the message, you know, and I was typing as fast as I could, but it goes something like this. Last week on Power, Chris Adonis, the reigning NWA national champion and Tom Latimer, a former tag champion, were offered and accepted a match against Aaron Stevens and Kratos for the NWA World's Tag Championships. As such, the two gentlemen did not appear in time for last week's main event, nor did they convey any reason in person or otherwise that would have prevented them from competing, such as injury or a personal matter. Additionally, Wrong. Nick Aldis... Additionally, Nick Aldis, the reigning NWA World Heavyweight Champion, left our show before its completion, and like the two I mentioned before, has not responded to our every request for either an explanation, confirmation, that they'd appear on this week's edition of NWA Power. As well, Camille, also affiliated with Aldis' Strictly Business Group, did not respond via text message, but only to say that she was fine 
and would be at tonight's event. So given the gravity of these circumstances and as a demonstration that this organization is ever reliant on the trust of our great fans to present to them fair and impartial contests, the NWA as a governing body must act and immediately. So forthwith, both Adonis and Latimer are stripped of their NWA tag team title opportunity, as well as all monies they might have received for appearing. And as for Nick Aldis, he is hereby docked one month's salary, which will be donated to charity. And he, like Adonis and Latimer, are expected to appear on next week's show or their contracts with the NWA and both Aldis and Adonis' reigns as champions will come to an end. And so do our great fans. And to turn the page, in a positive direction, there will be a match between two great veteran teams tonight to determine who will face Aaron Stevens and Kratos at next week's power for the NWA Tag Team Championships. <clears throat> so here we are, William Patrick Cor Corgan issuing uh, that statement, and now no longer at number one contender are Adonis and Latimer and Nick Aldis's docked pay for a month. I mean, this is this is I mean. Some might say a little harsh. Some might say justified. I'm sure that uh, we all have our opinions here. So I guess just right off the bat, since he seems raring to go, I'll throw it to the doc. And I warned you, I, I and I won't say that. I won't say I told you so. But this is exactly the kind of thing I feel like we sort of discussed last week that could be a potential ramification for trying to toss your weight around in the NWA locker room like Strictly Business was last week. Toss your weight around as though as though you're the two top as though you're the world's heavyweight champion. I mean, who the heck does Nick Aldis think he is? The world champion? You know? And and, and there's so many errors of fact and fallacy in this in this statement from President William Patrick Corgan that there was no reason they did not convey any reason I heard a reason. I don't know. Maybe he wasn't watching the episode. I saw it. I saw Nick Aldis's reason. You know, that they are protecting the business, the enterprise, and therefore, the as the top commodities in the company, they are therefore protecting the NWA. But this doesn't surprise me. The fix is in. Joe Galley's in on it. Velvet uh, uh, Sky's in on it, evidently. Obviously, the president's in on it. And, and the evidence is right before your eyes. 14-man battle royal to determine a number one contender. That should include you in, first off, that this president that we have has no understanding, has no compunction or respect for this championship, this lineal title, that he's going to put it up for grabs, place Nick Aldis in a match against a man who won a shot because of luck, because of a, of a roll of the dice, because of a spin of the roulette wheel participating in a 14-man battle royal. And then that, that that was my suspicion last week, and that was confirmed this week when he announces that if Nick Aldis, the reigning lineal world's heavyweight champion, if he doesn't show up, that he's going to be stripped, that he's going to disrupt the greatest world heavyweight championship title reign of any of our lifetimes. I'm going to tell you right now, guys, we're never going to see this again. The last man to ever exceed 950 days, guess who it was? Can you name him? No, nah, y'all can't name them. Nobody in here can name them. Maybe maybe Alliance Blog or, or uh, James Lawrence, if he's in there. The last man to exceed that mark was Luthez in his third title reign. He reached 1,079 days. We will never see this again. And he just wants to brush that off and say, if you don't show up, I'm going to discontinue your championship title reign. That shows me that he doesn't have real true respect for this championship. Another thing that it shows me is that he doesn't have respect for the spot that Chris Adonis and Tom Latimer earned. They earned that tag team championship through blood, sweat, and tears, okay? And when they decide to redeem that, it should be their call to make. You don't just take that away from him and blindly hand it to someone else because you don't like, you don't like the, uh, uh, the fact that they made a business decision in the interest of the company, in the interest of strictly business, and therefore in the interest of the NWA. I'm completely disappointed, I'm bewildered, and frankly, I'm hurt. You're jumping in there and you're tossing a lot. First of all, you, you've got a lot of attitude, 
behind everything you're saying there. And I, and I have some responses, but I'm going to let our boy will talk for a minute because you're kind of, you're, you're, you're ticking me off a little bit with your attitude. Ooh. All right. Yeah. I'll come in and follow that. Uh, <clears throat> so Rob, you know, I, I'm not gonna necessarily argue with or dispute a lot of the things you're thinking. I, I hold the 10 pounds of gold in the highest respect. I hold Nick Aldis, our real world's champion in the highest respect. And I do believe uh, he has afforded the respect that, that you're giving him. Um, you know, I'll, I'll be at yours is a little extreme, but I'm going to come at it from a different direction because I am an avid fan of tag team wrestling. And for me, those tag team titles are the top prizes in the land for any tag team out there. And so the angle that I come from this at from the angle from is yes, their blood, sweat and tears earn them a title shot. But what does that say about the tag team titles when they don't even show up for that? And, and how is that supposed to make the tag team titles of the NWA feel prestigious? Imagine if Chris Adonis had a national title match and the opponent just didn't show up. No, no, no side, you know, sight unseen. He just decided he was not going to show up out of principle for the match. Do you think he should get to choose when he fights Chris Adonis? I mean, that that's where I'm coming from. And so, you know, I'm not saying that that William Patrick Corgan's decision is not extreme. I'm not saying it's the same decision I would have made, but the fact remains that we were supposed to have a tag team title match last week. And, you know, in, in, in William Patrick Corgan's words, it's not that he, a reason wasn't given on the show. It's that a reason wasn't given personally to him as the president of this company as to why number one contenders did not show up for a title match that they earned. And that's why he has made the decision that he's made. So is it extreme? Yes. You know, when you start talking about pay doc and uh, suspensions and stripping titles, yes, that's a little extreme. But you've got to admit that when you've got a title match as prestigious as a, a world's tag title match that the, the champions are left standing in the ring holding their hands up at the end of the night, what's supposed to be a, 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 an incredible main event, and then the show just goes off the air because the other guys don't bother to show up. You're, you're meaning to tell me that that's okay? He is telling you that, Will. Rob's over there, the doc, and I mean, God bless him, he's a smart man, but he's over there telling you that basically that the 10 pounds of gold walks around and part of that world title, they might as well etch CEO right there in the gold. And that's just not the case. You don't get a free parking pass in the NWA and you get to do whatever you want, whenever you want. That's not the deal. He is afforded respect. We all respect him. The NWA respects him. He went through a whole entire pandemic. Don't even get us started about the pandemic when the title couldn't even be defended and we just accepted that he was the world's heavyweight champion. So don't pretend like he gets zero respect because he does. The person that's not getting respect here for people like you and Strictly Business, in this case, is the president, William Patrick Corgan, and the brand of the National Wrestling Alliance. Because these guys just think they walk in and they control every single detail about every aspect of the business. They think strictly business means they control all business. And that is not how a wrestling promotion works. They are not in charge. Matches are made. Titles are defended. You do not get to pick and choose who you face off against. And it's been very clear that Nick Aldis gets the limelight. The uh, the majority of the television time presented on NWA Power every single week, whenever he wants it, yet he still thinks, it, it seems as though, I didn't want to believe this, but if they do walk in there as though they pretend that this man, William Patrick Corgan, and believe me, I'm not trying to blow smoke up his butt either, but I'm just saying, the guy rescues the NWA or helps the NWA along out of the muck and the mire, relative obscurity for a long time there, brings it up, gets it, the spotlight it deserves brings the 10 pounds of gold back to the proper prestige that it's always earned throughout its entire history. And then they look at this guy as, oh, here's the rock star guy who came in and purchased a wrestling company, but he obviously doesn't know how to run one, so we'll do it for him. Well, guess what? Billy Corgan, there he is. He just, he just showed you he knows exactly how to run a wrestling company, and if he has to put his foot down... He'll do it, and he does it the old school way. He hit them right where it counts. He hit them right there in their contracts, their titles, and their wallets. 
And that's what you got to do with guys like this who are trying to big time the NWA. I'm sorry, pal. You're not bigger than the NWA. You might be the champion, but next week, next month, at Wind Shadows Fall on June 6th, that could all change. And then what are you tossing around and pretending like you're a big shot? Well, Gary, what you've shown just now with that rant is that a sharp tongue is no indication of an equally sharp wit, okay? Because, in fact, the 10 pounds of gold is the NWA, and you're missing the whole point of this. It's not about Billy Corgan having the authority to, to, to do what he wants to do. We all acknowledge that. The fact that something is the case doesn't mean it ought to be the case. The whole point of Nick Aldis's frustration is that he wants a challenger, a legitimate challenger like a Chris Adonis or a Tom Latimer or maybe perhaps a Trevor Murdoch or somebody like that, not someone who won a shot on a crapshoot. That's the point. That's why they made the stand, and you're forgetting that. You're forgetting that. So don't try to – you don't try to big-time anybody. I'm not – Listen, all I'm saying is, is that they're trying to run a wrestling company, Rob, and you got a guy over here who thinks just because he's the world's heavyweight champion, uh, nay, the real world's heavyweight champion, he thinks that that makes him able to decide when and where titles are defended. If he wants his guys to participate in a match, he'll Gary, say it's okay. Let me, no, you let saw me it. You right saw there. it last week. The whole right date of it. It ruined the entire show just based off the whims right there. of Nick Aldis. This is a man who went on the Aldous Crusade, who took on who's Nick Aldous beaten? Everybody he's had to. Everybody they throw in front of him, he beats. All he's asking for is respect for the crown, the championship. That's all this is about. And all William Patrick Corgan is asking for is respect for the brand, respect for the bookie. The fans too did last week to NWA Power to see Tom Latimer and Chris Adonis participate in an advertised match for the tag team titles. And it didn't happen. And why didn't it happen, Rob? Don't answer because, that. I'll tell, because, you why, because, I'll tell you why it happened. Because Nick because Aldis you, took you it try to himself. manipulate the belt and we, we can manipulate too. You can manipulate, we can manipulate. That's what they were sending. That's the signal they sent. And you I understood what? it. You, you I can think Will understood it. You can up his butt as you want to, but the people that should be questioning him, I can't help you. But the people that need to be thinking about their careers and what they're doing from here is Chris Adonis and Tom Latimer, who are sitting there and missed out on the mm. opportunity of the tag team titles, the are. most prestigious tag team championships that have ever existed right there in front of them. Could have had them, could be the champions right now. And there's one reason that they're not. There it is. That's there it is. And now we get to the point. You, along with Joe Galley and Tim Storm and President William Patrick Corgan and all the rest of them, and evidently will too, y'all just trying to drive a wedge between the most elite, most coherent faction in professional wrestling today. Thank you. Thank you for showing your hand. Well, I don't know. Maybe I've gone crazy. Maybe I'm just being out of line. I, you know. Uh, no, I mean, here's here's the thing, Rob, and and I'm look again. I'm not trying to be peacemaker here, but all all respect due and earned by the real world's champion, strictly business, a dominant force in professional wrestling. But Rob, let's look at this logically. At the end of the day, who's got the power in this situation? I would love to say Nick Aldis because he's earned that belt. But at the end of the day, William Patrick Corgan can snap his fingers and he's no longer Nick Aldis's championship reign comes to an end, whether that's what I want to see happen or not. That's the reality and the pecking order of this, this business and this company. And so William Patrick Corgan is putting a, a stand out there and he's saying, look, you're going to come at me and you're going to try to try to create, you're going to try to be the CEO of this company and pretend just because you've got that belt that's not going to happen, and it's not going to fly, and that's the stand he's taking. The Alliance blog well, in the chat even bring it up, the fact that titles equal money, and if I could just point that out, another reason that Tom Latimer and Chris Adonis could really be self-evaluating here and evaluating this whole circumstance is more titles equals more money, and not only did they get a missed opportunity last week for that, now this week they're also suffering again. So thanks, Nick Aldis. This this is the kind of leadership that Strictly Business is under. And I listen, I love like Nick Aldis, it's like, but it's, it's – No, uh, you don't. No, you don't. No, you don't. It's like you don't even know the man. It's like you don't think that he's – this is the chess master. You don't think he's four or five steps, plays ahead? Wait till next week, man. He's four or five plays ahead, I promise you. He is looking out for the interests of his company and this company. 
but also that 10 pounds of gold. So if you don't know that, if you don't believe that, then you, in fact, do not know the champion and you don't care about him. Nor do you, nay, nor do you care about that championship. All right, whatever. We've got to we've got to move along here a little bit. Uh, the we'll, we'll we'll go back and forth here. We could get into this and, and the chat room. We see you out there. We know you guys have opinions too, so we want to hear from you. So make sure to express yourselves there in the chat and uh, let us know what you think. And especially at the end, we'll go to some of your opinions and uh, your points, and we'll we'll talk about all of that. Believe us, because we want to know. And uh, Rob Rob needs to hear it. From other people besides us, Cl clearly we're not breaking through that thick skull. Uh, next up, you get uh, the opportunity to see a commercial for the School of Morton. First time ever on the uh, NWA Power Show, uh, we get the advertisement for School of Morton. So you guys check out School of Morton. I just wanted to bring that up, Ricky Morton. I mean, my God, if you're going to learn from somebody, who better to learn from besides Austin Idol? I don't know. That's uh, competing schools on here. What a time to be a person who wants to become a professional wrestler or to get into the wrestling business. You've got two of the greats ready to teach you. And, uh, it, they're, and, and by the way, as a testament to the brand, where are they showing up to advertise their show? Right here on NWA Power. Just pointing that out. All right. So let's talk about this TV title match real quick. Uh, hi, uh, what... Uh, Maybe the highlight of the night for me uh, was this Pope versus Matt Cross matchup for the television championship. Matt Cross earning that spot last week and just a great match back and forth. Uh, just just an incredible athleticism for both men. These are two guys that are on their way up at the top of their game and uh, veterans, both of them. And uh, just, uh, just a unique style, especially in the NWA uh stratosphere like they're they're you know with a with a pool of big men like they have it's fun to see like two technically gifted men like these guys uh pope more of a technical athletic specimen and matt cross just a high flyer all over the place and just a great great match uh like i said back and forth but pope just too much for Matt Cross in this one, hits that Elijah Express and gets the one, two, three. And uh, there is a nice show of respect at the end, by the way, which is always nice to see. We don't get that every time uh, in the wrestling ring, unfortunately. But uh, Matt Cross does pay uh, his respects to Pope and vice versa. Pope walks out of here with win number four, I believe, in the uh, Lucky Seven uh, for the TV title. Uh, Will, what were your thoughts on that matchup? Great match. Uh, <clears throat> I agree with you. Highlight of the night in terms of, of in-ring action for me. Um, two guys that uh, obviously are hungry for it. I mean, Pope uh, is out to, to hit that lucky seven and potentially in his belt for a chance at uh, 10 pounds of gold. Uh, obviously, he's he's got his sights set on that, as anyone in his position should and would. Um, but you know, it's a formidable challenger in Matt Cross, a guy who's been in the business for a long time, has a massive love for pro wrestling and, uh, he's earned it. And, uh, I love seeing guys. This is why I love the NWA because guys can come in, they can prove themselves. They can earn shots at, at titles as prestigious as a world's television championship and, and get that shot came out and um, unfortunately it wasn't his night, you know, but the, the Pope is um, like I said, man, he's, he's, he's gone through guys like Tyrus, Tom Latimer, uh, even if those were time limit draws, I mean, he has not had an easy road uh, so far. And so, you know, as much respect as I have for Matt Cross, it was nice to see Pope pick up uh, a win and not go the time limit and actually, you know, remind us all why he position that he's in and uh you know we'll see we'll see where it goes from here rob i feel like we have to agree on the pope as a television champion just uh totally dominant here well you know had a great back and forth with matt cross but just proving why he is the tv champion fantastic match man love this match i agree with everything that will said he's uh we're usually when it comes to uh the subject of matt cross or the pope or the tv title uh will is spot on i have to give him that and we, we see two of the most exciting, technically sound and proficient competitors going at it in a, in a fantastic uh, match. And I'm with you. I'm glad to see Pope win this. But, th but this gets back to, and not to beat a dead horse, but this gets back to the debate we were having prior to this. It doesn't have this to. Is the, 
it, no, it doesn't have to, but I'm just going to say it. This was a great match. This was a well, well booked match on behalf of the president, William Patrick Corgan. I have to give it to him here. This is fantastic. This is who Nick Aldis wants to face. He wants to face the winner of the lucky seven. That's who he wants. He doesn't want someone who won a crapshoot, someone who won, you know, uh, uh, on the on, on uh, playing the hand of blackjack. He wants to win someone who earned the shot. And uh, Pope is well on his way. He's three away. Four, five, yep, three away. Carried the two. Yep, my math's correct. And uh, I'm really excited about the direction this is going. These are two of my favorite guys, Matt Cross and Pope. And I'm really, really high on on Pope and his trajectory right now. And I think the sky's the limit for him. So stay tuned for this guy. Super interesting. What what I notice about what you just said there is 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 I agree with you that Nick Alda should have his uh uh you know his preferences on who he does and doesn't defend the title against, but that wouldn't take away from who he has to defend his title against. Also, uh, why would he be dictating who people that he's friends with defend or fight? for title matches and that sort of thing that seems to have nothing to do with any of this mm. which was what our debate was about earlier which you conveniently left out but moving on let's talk about Marche rocket and fred roster taking on aaron stevens and the most feared kratos uh the tag team champions and i i know we've covered this and kratos is a mercenary we've talked about this many weeks uh, but there's just something about him here. I, I just, these guys are not on the same page. We're obviously seeing that more and more even here as uh, Joe Galley pointed out in the middle of the match, no continuity between the two men, but somehow despite their disagreements, their differences, they do end up pulling it off here. Uh, Aaron Stevens gets the pin on Marche Rocket. One, two, three, the tag team champions victorious, even in a non-title match. And uh, while Stevens attempting a similar show of respect like we just saw out of uh, Pope and Matt Cross, but outside the ring, Kratos goes and attacks Fred Rosser, which is just uh, brutal. And, and he has to be saved by Stevens. These guys are, I, I don't know if it was anybody else. I'd say they're on a collision course, but these are your tag team champions. So what exactly is going on here? Rob, I'll throw it to you first. Well, I, I think Aaron uh, Stevens uh, explained it pretty well last week that he hired a mercenary. He didn't hire a chum. He didn't hire a best buddy. They're not going to be going fishing together. They're not going to be taking embroidery classes or having sleepovers and pizza parties. They're in it for the titles. And, uh, uh, you know, they they got a, a big win tonight against a very uh, able uh, set of competitors. Not necessarily an established tag team, but Fred Rosser is a, is a big-time veteran. Marche Rocket's a younger guy, but he looks like a million bucks. And... Yeah, I mean, are they 100% on the same page like, say, an Adonis and a, a Latimer are? No, they're not. But at the end of the day, they get the dub, and uh, that's what it's all about. So if you get the dub, as far as I'm concerned, everything's working for you. Um, there was a little bit of, uh, of uh, extracurricular activity at the end of the match. Uh, that's not where Stevens' heart is at right now. That's obviously where uh, the most feared Kratos is at because he is a hired mercenary. And uh, he has to be restrained uh, from time to time. But uh, as far as I'm concerned right now, the, is everything, you know, hunky dory in the land of Kratos and Aaron Stevens? No, but it doesn't have to be. Will you share these uh, same thoughts as the doc? I mean, I, I, it, it's hard to disagree with. I mean, usually Rob isn't hard to disagree with, but here's the thing for me. You know, I love tag team wrestling. You know, I have a massive amount of respect for the belts that Aaron Stevens and Kratos carry around. And at the end of the day, whoever comes out with the win and whoever comes out holding those belts, they're the best in the world. And I know tonight wasn't a title match, but it was an opportunity for Aaron Stevens and Kratos to work together for a common which is to get a victory and they achieve that goal. So, you know, was it, was it perfect? Was it flawless? Were they on the same page every step of the way? No, but I've watched enough tag team wrestling in my life to know that that's not always required to win and to stay on top. So I don't know that there's any hope that they're going to resolve these differences or that they're going to become, you know, this super team that are, are, you know, like Rob said, having pizza parties 
really cool. Uh, I, I don't, you know, whether or not they're going to become that or not, right now they're tag champs. I have a massive amount of respect for them. Uh, they came out with a victory tonight over two very, very able competitors. I mean, they might not be a traditional tag team and may not have worked together in the past, but Fred Rosser and Marche Rocket are no <laughs> no newbies. They're no, you know, nothing to to shake a stick at. I mean, these guys are, are accomplished, great professional wrestlers. So a win's a win, and it was a convincing win in the end. And um, despite the extracurricular activity, you know, as much as it pains me to say, I mean, Aaron Stevens and Kratos are, are still rolling on. I would not take anything away from Aaron Stevens or Kratos. Kratos is a monster in the middle of that ring. And Aaron Stevens is obviously one of the great minds in the wrestling industry. Uh, these two together are a lethal force. And there's a reason they're the tag team champions. And again, also don't want to take anything away from Marche Rocket and Fred Rosser because both these guys are very, very talented. Uh, they looked amazing tonight, but... There you are. You're in there with the tag team champions and they are there for a reason. And so you got to bring your A game and it just wasn't enough uh, tonight for those guys. Uh, we throw backstage to Mae Valentine. She's with Melina and Taryn Terrell. Um, there was some talk about uh, Thunder Rosa versus Camille tonight, but that got pushed back to next week. Uh, Melina says things are still on course. They're, uh, they're feeling good about everything. Taryn Terrell uh, saying that, um, she also feels good about Camille's chances in this matchup and the stipulations that are going on. You know, Thunder Rosa doesn't get to appear in any other promotions. If she loses, if Camille loses, Thunder Rosa becomes the number one contender for the women's championship. Um, so, you know, just a, a basic discussion about that match coming up, which leads directly into a Thunder Rosa versus genocide, what we could call a quote unquote tune up match. Uh, Thunder Rosa trying to get her bearings and what better person to try to get your uh, uh, get a handle on the, the differences in styles and size than against genocide, who is impressive. And uh, genocide just a, a monster in the ring as well. And, um, you know, on her end, I would say the unfortunate part for her is as good as she is and as talented as she is, she is a little new and she's drawing two of the top women in professional wrestling today. Uh, two of the top superstars in general in wrestling today in Camille and Thunder Rosa right after. So genocide just uh, not luck of the draw, not on her side here. And uh but realistically, I guess this makes sense. Uh, we're finding out that the uh, two people competing for that number one contendership are the right people. And we find out here, great, brutal match. But Thunder Rosa gets the submission victory with a leg lock there at the end and genocide tapping out. And uh, Thunder Rosa proving she has so many different ways to beat you in the middle of the ring. She doesn't have to outpower you. She can submit you as well. So just a very interesting match. Uh, Will, I'll throw to you first there on that one. Uh, what do you think about uh, Thunder Rosa and Genocide? Great match. Uh, I mean, two two women that I have a lot of respect for. Um, you know, it's it does make sense. I mean, Thunder Rosa is, is barking up the tree to Camille, and uh, Camille – got a victory over genocide. So this almost was just kind of a tune up, as you said, um, just to make sure I, there wasn't really a lot of doubt in my mind that Thunder Rosa was going to come out on top. I mean, if, if you doubt the ability and the perseverance and just the, the, the ability of Thunder Rosa, you're not watching wrestling in 2021 or in 2020 the last year. Um, Thunder Rosa has got her eyes set on one thing and that's the Burke, the women's world championship and I don't think anything's going to stop her, even somebody as 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 strong as a genocide. And uh, so it was a great match, really enjoyable match. But um, Thunder Rosa, you know, again, and proved to all of us why she's in the position that she's in and uh, put out, you know, a warning, so to speak, to Camille about what's to come. So. Doc, your thoughts. No, I think I think Gary, you're right on point. Earlier, a, a lot of the the deal with genocide is that it's the luck of the draw, man. She's drawing a tough lot here uh, as she's making her name in uh, the NWA. Uh, she is relatively green, uh, but everything I've seen about here uh, about her leads me to believe that pretty soon everybody's going to be talking about genocide. Everybody's going to be talking about genocide. She she's coming. She's getting her footing. Um, she's finding her way against some pretty tough competition. And where you want to, you know, if you want to know where you stand in the world of professional wrestling, that's who you got to take on. You got to take on the big dogs. You got to go against the Camille and a Thunder Rosa. 
And I'm I and I think Will's correct too. I mean, they're at the end of the day, this was a foregone conclusion to me. I, I knew Thunder Rosa would come out with this um, because of the you know the the level of competitor that she is and what she's established. Uh, but you know, my takeaway from this is, gosh, I cannot wait to see what happens when this colossal matchup between Thunder Rosa and Camille happens. And two, I got to see more of genocide. Definitely one of, uh, you know, as far as new things in NWA this this year or this season, uh, has genocide is it's at the top of that list of just being like a fantastic competitor. And, and, and you guys in the chat, I mean, we'd love to hear what you think. I mean, as far as uh, new folks that have joined the NWA, we'd love to see who uh, your favorites have been and, and that sort of thing. But uh, uh, keep in mind, too, with, with new people like genocide and with Sky Blue and uh, Marche Rocket and all of these other people, Fred Ross are showing up. I mean, whoever you like, you got to let the NWA know they're trying to build a company uh, based on a, a wrestling that you'll enjoy. And uh, they want to they want to have the competitors and contract those people that you want to see. Uh, so whoever you think is worthy, be sure to let them know. Tag them in posts on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, everywhere. They're paying attention. I promise you they care about what the fans think. Unlike, uh, you know, I won't bash anybody, but they care about what you think. And they're, I promise you, they're concerned. Uh, so just want to take a quick second as we wind down here at the end of uh, the recap of the show. Before we throw to the audience, we want to let you guys know. Uh, you can see all our handles right down here in the bottom corners. We are from a show called This Is Pro Wrestling. Uh, we do it every single week. We're always like live, usually on Sundays. And uh, we do a history podcast we think you guys would dig. And, of course, we do this NWA Power Post show. And more to come, by the way. You can find us on all of social media at TIPW Show. We would be honored if you would follow us uh, and subscribe to our YouTube over at YouTube.com slash This Is Pro Wrestling. The NWA has been gracious enough to let us be a part of this. Grant us a platform right here with you all to talk about NWA power right after it airs. And uh, again, it's 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 a nice thing they've done for us as fans because they know that there is a lot of talk. The people want to express themselves. They want to get out what they think about the show and they need a platform to do it in. And so they've given us this one right here. And so uh, this is all for you guys. So we appreciate you being here and we appreciate the NWA. So anyway, check us out. This is pro wrestling, wherever you get podcasts and on YouTube everywhere let's what let's wrap this thing up real quick because i know we we've got a we've got some things we got to get to here um so we get tyrus out with idol and uh kyle it's the idol mania power hour says uh austin idol tyrus is in the battle royal that's the big news there and that's bad news for everybody else also apparently we're going to get the debut of tiki bar blood uh which uh you know i'm excited about um, but let's jump to the main event. The main event, the end versus the War Kings. Now for the number one contendership for the NWA Tag Team Championship and a big beefy boy battle is what I would call that one. And these guys just tore each other apart. Brutal, massive dudes just bashing each other. And uh, and it, it came to a conclusion with a pinfall victory by the War Kings. One, two, three, but deceptively close like very close and on that replay it almost looked as though odinson got that shoulder up and uh so i feel like this is uh something that we're gonna have to uh we're gonna have to we're gonna have to talk about later um the i i can't imagine like other things william patrick Corg is just gonna let that lie sorry i was getting distracted by annoyances off to the side but uh anyway <laughs> <laughs> then, uh, all right, I'm just gonna do it. Let's just let's just let's just bring him in. There he is. There's Nick Nick Aldis, ladies and gentlemen. He's okay. back. You know, Gary, my blood pressure is a little high right now. I understand. It could be because I just completed workout two of two today. It could be because I'm. Charged up on high performance ultimate pre workout available now at legacysubs.com. Use code NWA FAM for 10% off your entire. Don't life. interrupt me. Or it could be the fact that I had to sit here and listen to you spewing out 
utter trash putting my name in your mouth and using the kind of language and the kind of tone that if you were face to face with me, we'd be throwing hands right about now. Let me ask you a question. I don't know. By don't default, hands. just that. Throw that shut up. There. By default, who is the number one contender for the world's championship at any given moment? If there is no number one contender clearly defined. I mean, Chris Adonis is the national champion. The national right? heavyweight champion. Correct. Now, Chris Adonis was the national heavyweight champion at the time of this battle royal being announced, was he not? That's correct. And Chris Adonis and Tom Latimer were scheduled to wrestle for the World Tag Team Championships at the time that this battle royal was announced, were they not? Correct. So if they had won, they would be the tag team champions. You staying with me? I know I have to break it down into bite-sized chunks for you. Okay. So let me ask you about the curious timing of Billy Corgan then suddenly adding a stipulation out of nowhere, which has never, never made sense and never been a part of wrestling up until now, that, oh, existing champions are not eligible to compete in this battle royal. Do you not think that perhaps this was engineered somewhat to preclude Tom Latimer and Chris Adonis from being in the battle royal? What other reason would there be for making that stipulation? Why would you exclude the elite wrestlers in the NWA, ergo the men holding the championships besides the world's championship? What possible logical reason would you have for that if it wasn't discrimination? And you have the nerve. No, no, no. You have the nerve to sit there on your high horse and preach to these bottom feeding dwellers who sit in the chat room, like Alliance blog, who's been doing this for over a decade and still only got 2000 followers. Yeah, I see you. you're a jabroni and a ham sandwich. And I don't want to hear from you ever again about what the NWA is supposed to do. This is what pro wrestling is supposed to be. This is what the NWA is supposed to be. No, no, no. You don't tell anyone what the NWA is supposed to be. And you certainly don't lecture me about what the NWA is supposed to be. I made the NWA. Explain to me right here and now in a way that is acceptable how it is, how it makes any sense at all for existing champions to be excluded from the battle royal that names a number one contender. Tell me, go ahead. Well, if I'm going to answer that direct question, um, because there's a lot of things to unpack there from what you just said, but no, no, um, just one thing to unpack. Just tell me why that makes sense and why that's fair. Well, at the end of the day, I mean, honestly, I mean, Doc over there as a as a uh, the the man that I know you are that that some sometimes backs up your arguments half the time. Uh, Nick, who signs your check? I'm not asking whose company who is it. I'm asking you a direct question, Gary Horn. Is it fair and does it make sense for existing champions to be excluded from a 14 man battle royal to determine a number one contender for the world's championship? Is it, and if so, why? Because that's the match that was made. Those but are the why rules. Is it that were... fair? Why does that stipulation make sense? Who is the one being unfair? Who is the one moving the goalposts here, Gary? You're sitting there going, oh, these guys are trying to control everything. Hey, no, we're just controlling stuff by being the best. That's the way that sports work. I do have a significant amount of power because I'm the world's champion and because nobody has been able to beat me for almost three years. And you want to sit there, and again, you I'm want sure to get egged on. You, you want to get egged on by these keyboard warriors who have got very short memories and forget the fact that I beat Brian Cage, Lance Archer, Cody Rhodes, Marty Skull, Brian Pillman Jr., PJ Black, Christopher Daniels. I've beaten Bronson Reed, 
Robbie Eagles. I've literally beaten guys from NXT, AEW, Ring of Honor, New Japan Pro Wrestling, and the best of the best in the NWA. I am the world's champion. The reality is, Gary, is that we are amassing too much power, and you don't like it, and Billy don't like it, and your keyboard warrior buddies don't like it. But the fact of the matter is, is that that is the way that the world works. Well, it's the, the law of the jungle. The Alpha law of the male. jungle is, is the man who signs your checks makes the matches, and you are trying to change that situation, and that's no, not how no, it works. Hey, hey, he's, he's signing the checks for a reason. He's signing the checks because he knows I generate the revenue. He I mean, I, I love the idea. It Nick, ain't charity, that, Gary. Don't start. Don't don't again. That's another keyboard warrior argument. Oh, they're paying. They're paying you, man. We. It's like it's like fans who get upset when I block them because they say something stupid. Oh, we. I pay your salary. No, you don't. No, you do not. Nobody pays me. I pay me by being damn good. I pay me by having a very high market value, knowing that hey, if it don't work out here, I got plenty of places I can go. I don't need anywhere. I can draw box office without a promotion. But this is not this is not your personal Twitter account, Nick. This is the NWA. This is a wrestling promotion. This, this is, is promo yeah. This is this the is NWA. a sports company. This is the NWA, which is shows. why this is the NWA, which is why I take extreme issue with you using this channel, which I built, to spew this rhetoric against me and everything I stand for. Well, fine. Let's let's take something that you said. Just just something that you you threw out earlier. Who is the number one contender? Uh, given when when no one else is there, it's Chris Adonis. You remember when Chris Adonis won the national title? It was met March twenty first. Uh, was uh, or actually maybe March thirtieth is when that aired. But uh, either case, it's like May eighteenth. And well, he hasn't submitted it. He hasn't. Chris he hasn't Adonis hasn't, hasn't gotten a title shot challenge. as a number one contender. He hasn't submitted. Who a challenge. did you still have to make title a challenge, Gary? In the last couple of months, I'm just. Curious. How does it, what? What are you? What you're saying has holds zero water because he has to make the challenge. He's more than happy to be the national heavyweight champion. It's a very prestigious belt to have. So you're just happy to not have to defend the title. Then is what you're. It's saying. not about not having to defend the title, Gary. It's prize fighting. When the right moment, when the right challenger arrives and the pay-per-view moment arrives and the business is right and everything is set up and in place. Yeah, no, I'm not. No. Yeah. Uh, sorry. Sorry, keyboard warriors. I'm not going to show up at some barn in, the, in, in, in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, just to defend the title, just to satisfy your record keeping because you're a bunch of weirdos with OCD who want to write stuff on the Internet. No, I'm not going to go and degrade the championship by going and defending it against any old jabron or ham sandwich just to satisfy you guys who and let's face it the second i go do that everyone would be criticizing that too everyone would be saying oh they're too busy he's defending the title against anyone and it doesn't it doesn't look good it's not it's not prestigious enough you can't win with these people and i don't know why you're trying to you're becoming just like them gary and it's driving me nuts I think I'm just being perfectly logical honestly like no, i'm just I saying that mad. if they perfectly mad. state in uh, a sanctioned match by the National uh, Wrestling Alliance. Uh, this, by this is the NWA. Hello, you beautiful people. I am Gary Horn. Uh, please buy my stuff. Please buy uh, my mug. I'm you look at the great. You look at the great prize fighters in history, Gary. You look at your Mike Tyson's. You look at your Muhammad Ali's, and you get you get four five. Maybe six quality defenses a year. Don't sit here and try to act like the champ avoided defending the title during the pandemic. You, I guess you never heard of Noby Bryant. I guess you never heard of Mike Bennett. I guess you never heard of Brian Pillman Jr. I guess you never heard of Jason Strife. This champion is the first man in 30 years to defend the NWA championship in Omaha, Nebraska. You forget that, Gary? No, oh, I didn't only, forget it. No, you're a sick at the world of China, and I took a whole bunch of ham sandwiches with me who rode on my coattails to get there. Four different continents, Gary. Coast to coast. Almost every state in the union. You of all people should appreciate that it's it's not about like everything you've done. I mean, you as the current champion have to prove <laughs> you're the current. <laughs> well, so, oh, hey, oh, hey, hold on a minute. Hold on. I got a metaphor again. Here's Gary. Whoop, 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 yeah. whoop, whoop. Goalposts. 
Oh, oh, I, I got that. Well, yeah. Well, because but I think it was about that, wasn't it? I think that is exactly what you were talking about. Oh, what we, we're we're seeing it. You had a whole show based around what I did. You've been on you've been on the air for like fifty minutes, and you spent about forty of them talking about me, about what I did. I wasn't even on the show. You hold the real world's heavyweight championship, Nick. I, I mean, that's wasn't all we're even saying. on the show, and you can't get my name out of your mouth. What does well, that tell you about who I am and what I've done to the NWA and who I am as the real world's champion, Gary? It shows I'm that the, when you I'm make a decision pain. that it affects I'm an entire car. I am the big ticket. I'm the big fish in this ocean, and the rest of you people, including the wrestlers and all of you and everybody else, are the remora fish swimming under my belly. And don't you forget it. Mm. I, and hey, when that battle royal happens, a number one contender will emerge. And guess what will happen? At when our shadows fall, live on pay per view June 6th, they will get in the ring with me. It will be the biggest night of their life and their career, and they will go down. And then you can all go to Pro Wrestling Tees and buy and still. That's a the uh, reality of the situation. It's a is, well designed shirt, by the way. The reality of the situation is. You guys, you, you're starting to realize now that everything I say is true. You're starting to realize that everything I professed is reality. And you're also starting to realize, and this is why Billy Corgan is getting, getting his panties in a twist too. He's getting a bit itchy up there in Chicago because he realizes where the power really lies. Take a good look, Gary. Here's where the power lies. I see it. I mean, clearly you've made that happen. Like last week, you, you, you treated it, like I said, like your own personal Twitter account, you blocked a tag team championship match from happening on the show. And uh, so, I mean, you clearly carry a lot of power and uh, I mean, God bless that. Whoa, whoa, no, 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 you, no, no, but, I no, no, no. Hey, I stood up to injustice. I stood up to corporate corruption. I stood up to a, a very unfair ruling, which again, you have, you are still yet to provide a valid reason for doing so. Well, you're just sitting here right now and you're telling me that whoever wins this battle royal, you'll face them at when our shadows fall on June yeah. 6th. And then all of a sudden, but the whole reason we're having this conversation is because you had a problem with the battle royal. If you yeah, just let it happen, like it was planned, uh, that was my uh, point. Uh, 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 uh. I had a problem with the Battle Royal. I don't have a problem with the Battle Royal other than the fact that it's an archaic, outdated way to determine a number one contender. I had a problem with the fact that my very best friend, man who was the best man at my wedding, and one of the best professional wrestlers in the entire sport today, Tom Latmer, was on the verge of being excluded from that opportunity, along with Chris Adonis, who was guaranteed to be excluded from that opportunity because he was the national champion. But let's face it, they would have won the tag team titles too. So then they would have both been they would have both been excluded from it. So then I would be sitting there going, I'm a fraud, Gary Horn. I would have sat there and said, this isn't right. I'm a fraud. Because whoever won that battle royal, they can't beat Chris Adonis. They can't beat Tom Latmer. I deserve to wrestle the very best. Why would why have a battle royal if the very best cannot compete in it when there's no valid reason for the very best to not be allowed in it? So presuming that Tom Latimer enters this battle royal and comes out victorious, you'll be happy to face him one on one. One hundred percent. OK. Why and, is that and, so hard to believe, Gary? Why right. is that so hard to believe? What, what evidence right. have you seen in this man's career that tells you that he would not defend the championship against Tom Latimer? I, I, you you know, have you have not answered have a none. single question tonight. Zip. You're just sitting there. You ain't got none. Nothing. I think that anybody watching objectively can see that there has been a little. It, it seems a bit dodgy the way that uh, some of the things. Oh, have gone dead, oh, like I'm so the, sorry. Oh, I didn't realize it seems a bit dodgy. Oh, what what an excellent piece of journalistic work on your part, Gary. What a fantastically worded reason for going along with this ridiculous narrative that you're spewing just to try to get eyeballs. This complete clickbait mentality that you have. You've been spending too much time around Joe Galley. Like, well, I think Joe Galley is oh, an excellent seems, journalist, but I mean, you know, has, it seems a bit dodgy. But hey, this is a prize fight. It ain't a popularity contest, right? 
When I told Trevor Murdoch that I don't want somebody like you to be the world's champion, I meant it because I want this company to thrive and prosper. Okay. But if, if he would approve himself to be the best, the best candidate, the best and the number one contender, I will absolutely step in there with the man. But it is, it is absolutely, it is absolutely unconscionable that he would be suspended of his own doing, but could then have, but then still be granted an opportunity to be the number one contender. But Tom Latimer and Chris Adonis could not. Well, I mean, it is convenient that everybody but your best friends uh, seem to somehow lose their opportunity for t- like Tim Storm. I mean, I guess he can't uh, attempt a title shot now, and he had Trevor Murdoch suspended. He had a shot. And- had a shot. It's uh well I'm just uh, so, uh, so there's a good possibility, uh, Nick, that somebody yeah, like a Gary, Trevor Murdoch Gary. could win the battle royal. Gary, like. Gary, hey, listen, outside of outside of being the world's champion, I'm an entrepreneur. And every entrepreneur will tell you that there is a risk reward ratio for everything in life. This is look, <laughs> communism didn't work, and this is America. And this is why I came here. I am the embodiment of the American dream. That's why I came to this country. I'm an immigrant, Gary. I had to. I had to earn my way to this country. I respect it and I understand it. You don't. But I don't. I don't believe in just giving people zero risk opportunities at my expense. You want to take everything I've worked for? Put something up. Put something on the line. You do see the irony in, in saying something like that. And then you just pulled a whole Workers Unite thing last week on NWA Power and just uh, pulled yourselves out of the uh, championship match. No, 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 no. When it was I booked a, by the company, by the president of the company false. that owns absolutely everything. Absolutely false. Absolutely false. That had nothing to do with the Workers Union. What are you, what are you talking about? What are you smoking over there? I made, a, I made, a, I made a conscious decision to allow my best friend and a man I have a great deal of respect for to be allowed to be able to have his opportunity to win the battle royal and be the number one contender. What is so hard for everyone to understand? Did you pay, by the way, the same amount they would have earned in that championship match? That Don't they you were worry about. Out? Don't you worry about what who got paid what. All right. Just curious. I mean, that's a match hey, well, they missed yeah, out well, on. Hey, guess what? Guess what? If he wins the battle royal and he gets a world championship match, how do you think? How much do you think he gets paid for that? Yeah. Biggest pe- main event, a pay per view. Oh, I don't know, a uh, uh, tag team title shot, but then, but then basically puts a ceiling on it. You know, you you guys, you keyboard warriors, you love to you love to go back and glorify all these guys. Oh, they broke the glass ceiling, blah, blah, blah. and now here is here is a here is a genuine, literal glass ceiling being presented a- a- against my guys, and you're sitting there going, "Oh, good one, Billy, good idea." Mar. That was, that was so great. Oh, Nick Honest is such a dick. Why is he such a... You're, you're, you're absolute... You're, you're completely... You're, you're ass backwards in this. I, I, I mean, I don't think there's a glass ceiling. I mean, Chris Adonis is the national champion. He he should absolutely cash in. And I, well, I hope, hey, I that's hope up to him. That's up to that him. you get what you want and Tom Latimer wins the Battle Royal. And then maybe they both do. What happens then if like Chris hey. Chris Adonis, Tom Latimer, Nick Aldis, Triple Threat, when our shadows fall? I, hey. Man, it writes itself. I can just, I can book that match right now. I smell money. Sounds like money to me. Yeah, I feel like you wouldn't show up, but that's just uh, from... Well, why? <laughs> well, based, on, based, on, based on what evidence? I just, I don't know, man. I'm just hey, I, you saying. Know, I, I bet if I asked us to have this conversation face to face, I bet you wouldn't show up. <laughs> Listen, you got I, a big, you got a big set of balls behind your keyboard, there, buddy. I mean, we're talking right now. I'm not typing any of this. I'm just saying that we're having a conversation. I mean, yeah, if you want to compare muscles, yeah, I'm you're, sure you're, your you're, arms you're, are bigger than mine. I get it. You're enjoying the sanctity and the safety it's, of being thousands of miles away it's and fun nobody to, knowing your exact location. No, it's fun to bully people around and get your way bully. until somebody who has bully. the paycheck and sets the matches. Whoa, whoa, whoa. They make bully. a match you don't excuse like, me. and then you I, think you get your me. way then. Excuse me, bully. Again, please, guess, again, please, it's please, please radio explain bully. to me. Tom Brady's a bully. Me what bullying is taking place here. Besides the fact 
that the owner who you who you yourself said, oh, he writes your checks. He's holding this over you like the sword of Damocles. You, you're saying, so you're basically saying that because he owns the company, he's basically going to completely destroy the credibility and the lineage of the world's championship because he doesn't like that I outmaneuvered him in this chess game. I think that you're attributing a lot of motives to him right now, just like you're. What is the most the, uh, important thing in the NWA? Period. End of story. What's the most important thing? I would say at this point that he has a show people can count on being accurately booked and presented and promoted, and that he gives the wrestling fans what they want. And it's the world's championship. So it's all about you. Always has been. Always. Wait. When did I say me? I said the world's championship, Gary. Listen. And what happens when you don't have the world's championship anymore? <sighs> well, hey, someone's gonna have to someone's gonna have to find a way to make that happen. But I think that's what this is. I think that's what this is really about, isn't it, Gary? Exactly. You, you're you Nothing. never you're not because really people, in this debate, Gary. Because people <laughs> like you. Like to live vicariously through the underdogs. Oh, Trevor's more like me. Oh, he's just like, yeah, that's the one who should be the. It's, 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 it's a wrestling fans' favorite word, should. Oh, they should do this. He should be the champion. They should. They should call it this. They should name it that. They should do it. This. <sighs> that's real easy. Do it. Go, go one, day, do it. one day, one day, a Trevor Murdoch, somebody like a Trevor Murdoch, uh, an Elijah Burke. A Matt Cross, somebody like that is going to step up and they're going to face you for that NWA championship. And when hey, they take hey. it from you, I want you to walk behind uh, that when, podium when they do. and you say, <laughs> it's all hey, about them now. All, they'll all step up. And when they do, it'll be the best payday of their life. Cash registers will be ring a ding a dinging. And then the next day, you'll go, oh, Nicholas really is the best in the world. Oh, dear. I was wrong. Nothing lasts forever, man. It's, it's, you know, listen, you've had a great run, but this, this, this attitude, this, this feels like overconfidence to me, but what do I know? I'm not the champion. Not a right. whole lot. Uh, yeah. Not a whole lot. That's over. been proven many times over. <laughs> overconfidence over like, who does he think he is again? I, who does he think he is the world champion? Who does he think he is the greatest world champion of the modern era? <laughs> God, who scary. does he think he is? The guy has held the championship for over 900 days. You you've done it, man. You you are great, but but every single one of those guys eventually lost that belt. And uh, and I just want to oh, wow. I want to see I want to wow. hear this talk. I want to hear this talk about how it's not about me, it's about that title when somebody comes in and takes it. And when they start demanding matchups that they want just Dang. because they all, should all carry they have, weight and they make the money. It's real simple, Gary. All they have to do is generate the same business that I generate as the world's champion. It's real simple, but they've got to get there first. And so far, hasn't happened. It's, it's going to take, let me tell, let me tell you something. I, I've never said I'll be champion forever. Hey, look, you know. I, I would really, I would, I, I would, I mean, look, I'm 34 years old. Okay. I, I got plenty of miles left, but you know, I would really hate to have to retire as the world's champion. I mean, that would not be good for business. It would not be good for, for the NWA. It would not be good for the history and the legacy of the championship, but you know, I can't wrestle myself. You know, it's going to take someone pretty damn special. I mean, I mean, I, and right now, you know, I'm just, Again, I want to make this unequivocally clear, even for someone like you to understand, that my actions last week were to ensure that the absolute best were going to be allowed to compete for a chance to be the number one contender. Sorry that you didn't get your tag title match. Don't blame me. Blame Billy for making a ridiculous rule that we saw through, and hey, sometimes you got to you got to make a, a small sacrifice for the big picture. I did that for them. 
they had the opportunity to be the tag team champions. I mean, I know that the 10 pounds of gold is, is, is where, you know, that's, that's everything, but those tag team belts are pretty prestigious, sir. And, no doubt uh, you, about it. I you did, get, I, you took the, that the opportunity time, away from them. For the first time tonight, I agree with you a hundred percent, but let me ask you this. Ask any wrestler in the dressing room if they would rather be one of the tag team champions or the world champion. If they you don't, know, give, you, like if they if don't you, give you option B, they probably shouldn't be there. I feel like you've had a couple of months to give Chris Adonis a, a world title match if you wanted to. As I don't give them, and you, Gary. Don't, you don't understand you, how this works. This is your problem. Is Again, you're one of, because you've got a microphone and a keyboard and some headphones and a bit of platform, you think you know how everything works. I'm just saying if I you were so concerned about them before shots. now, you could have done something about I, it. No, no, no. Listen They're to making me. their I, own path. These listen, are their decisions to make, and you're making I it for them. I don't go around giving people title shots. People challenge. That's why they're called the challenger. They say, hey, NWA Championship Committee, I would hereby like to make a challenge for the world's championship. And then they consider it. Yes, they come to me. Of course they do. Because, hey, without me, there ain't no title match. So, yeah, then it comes to me. But I don't walk around going, hey, you want a title shot? Let's go. Hey, let's make it happen. I'm pretty sure that the champ's inbox is, is packed, chock full of requests from spurious challengers. Anybody who just woke up one day and thought they were a bad man and decided they wanted a shot at the championship. Yeah, you yeah, just yeah, don't right. hand but, but if he had particular people them- he was so concerned about, my point is, is you could give those people a shot anytime you wanted if you thought they deserved it so much. That's there you the go. Whole you know point of being the just, to, just, to, just to satisfy Gary and, 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 his, and his little friends with their blogs, like let's I'll 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 go I'll go down the street now and I'll I'll, I'll I'll call back the guy who came to who who came to to uh to, to change the filters in my pool pump today and say hey hey you want to hey, hey Reg you want to you want a world title shot we'll, we'll we'll do it next week we'll go find a ring somewhere just because you know Gary's getting upset because I haven't defended the title against someone I'm just saying that if Nick Aldis versus Reggie the pool guy you know that mm. that's not what I'm saying. Like you're you're twisting what I'm saying. That's that's no, absolutely that, that's, not that's my your point. Forte. That's your forte, Gary Horn, the twister. All right. Well, this is uh, yeah. I mean, I, I'm just saying you, your position that you're in right now. You could give a lot of opportunity to younger guys in matchups. You could uh, take your opportunity if you were thinking about a guy like Tom Latimer and you thought that he deserved a world title shot over going for the tag team titles. You could have presented that at any point, but well, now all of a I sudden did, you I care. Did, I did present that. That is that, that, again. Yes, thank you for reminding me. That is exactly what well, I presented well, last we'll week. See, when you didn't have to. Insane. You didn't have to deny him the tag team titles to yes, give I, it to him. You're right. I didn't have to. I think you froze up. I think you froze up for a second. Yeah, I think I think what happened was the feed became so flabbergasted with your logic that it just it took a minute to process. Yeah, no, you're right. I didn't. You're right. I didn't have to do that. <laughs> had it not been for the fact that Billy made this ridiculous stipulation that excluded existing champions from being in a in a in an opportunity to to, to win the ultimate championship, the world's heavyweight wrestling championship. But again, where do you get to be the guy who dictates the program? Like you were the one who books that, the show. That, that's how. That's how. No, that's I'm not how. Up that's for the what, world I'm championship. Up for what's right. You defend that title. You are the champion. But I stood up for what's right. He made a he made a rule that has that that makes no sense. That if you if you could present me one reason right now that made it. That, that, that made absolute sense as to why the national heavyweight champion, the television champion, or the world tag team champions would not be allowed to compete in a battle royal that determines the number one contender for the world championship, I would say, okay, but there is no genuine reason. The only reason he did it was because, very curious timing, Chris Adonis is a national champion, and Chris and Tom were getting ready to win the world tag team championships. That's called the stacking was, the deck. The fix was in, Gary. And you the fix was and in. Joe Galley and all of them are behind it. Yeah. I'm starting to think you were you're in on it too. So you would have you would have been okay with it. I mean, if if 
champions were allowed in the battle royal. That would have it's, changed the whole dynamic. It, it's, it's easy to say now, now, I guess, but well, hey, look, let's not forget the fact that Chris Adonis is still the national champion, so he, so he is still excluded from this. What incentive is there to be the national heavyweight champion if you're then excluded from a job from a, a chance to be the world? I 100 percent agree. He's the number one contender. You should give him a shot next week. Let's do it. You, he, I mean, all, he has, all he has to do is submit his challenge to the championship committee. <sighs> Nick, <sighs> I think we both know that that's not what's going to happen, and you, it's it's easy to say because you know that. But if Chris Adonis wanted to go one on one, like I mean, it, you're you're gonna, you would rather that be the matchup than this battle royal competitor. I would rather it be. I would rather it be the most deserving wrestler in the NWA currently. So yes, now that Billy, you know, and again, look, I, I'm not the one who made a battle royal. I'm not the one who said, oh, forget, forget pecking order, forget win loss records, forget pedigree. No, just throw everybody in the ring and, you know, potluck and whoever stays in and, you know. Someone could just roll out under the bottom rope and hide under the ring and then that boy can Well, it's going to be a great, great main event. Oh, yeah. Pay-per-view buys through the roof. Cash registers are ringing. Nick Aldis thought... against Sal Renaro, the, the world's shortest world title match. Get, get it, catch it live on Fight TV. Forty nine ninety nine, yeah. <laughs> well, let's see. Let's see what that does for business. Yeah, how many people will buy the next pay per view if I if, if God only knows who's going to win this battle royal. So well, have you thought about that? So I'm, I'm I'm curious. Like, since you have so many better ideas about what should be happening, why why don't you just book the whole show? <laughs> it's not a bad idea. It's not a bad idea, but why don't you? Because that's not my job. It's not your job, but yet no. you're still trying to make it your job. No, as I'm of last trying, week, no, you just, tried no, to make it your no, job. No, just trying to just trying to defend the honor of the championship and make sure that no, people, this whole that argument gets, has been dictated around the principle that you think make sure that, you that everyone gets a fair what shot. matches happen. Just trying you to make get sure to that everybody gets that. a fair shot, including that, and, and in, in no in no world whatsoever besides a communist one. Would existing champions, people who have proven themselves to be the very best, be excluded from the opportunity to be the best of the best? Because that's what the world champion is, Gary. The best or of the best. The business so the owners best, no, no, no. Get Let me decide finish. what happens in if their the company best, without the their workers telling them what to do. Are not allowed to compete, then it's not best of the best, is it? I mean, you're getting a 14 man battle royal. I would say that that's going to pretty much determine like somebody. Are you challenge? Now. Hey, let, hey, look, hey, look. I got great respect for every wrestler in the NWA. No doubt about it, right? You don't. Sure, just, it sounds like it. We're, we're not going to. You know, we don't just pull any. We don't just pull any ham and egg off the street. But are you seriously telling me that every wrestler in that battle royal is someone that you'd pay money to see wrestle for the world's championship? Are you seriously telling me that, Gary? So now you get to decide who would <laughs> answer the question. You know, hey, you love to ask him, but you don't like to answer him very much, do you, my friend? Well, you I don't know, see you, you know, answering little... any of my questions what's the matter? either. That's my point. Is what's the that... matter? Some of that it wasn't that some of that beard butter gets stuck in your lips. You gotta get the words out. <laughs> Listen, I, if, if, if I it's think up to Gary, anybody who wins that number one contendership Will. Will deserves the Will opportunity. Can't That's Will the... can't stand himself. He's, he's witnessing a murder, and he can't, he can't take it. Yeah, if it's up to Gary, there'd be zombies around the ring. <laughs> uh, he probably say thinks, that he probably he probably thinks the zombies should should be the number one contender. Yeah, exactly. If they oh, won the battle wrong? royal, that oh, apparently what's wrong, is with the, what's wrong with the zombies? Oh, I thought zombies are cool. I do a podcast about it. Oh. <laughs> okay. All right. I see well, I think they should be allowed. They should be the number one contender. Doc, I thought you'd be like at least a little on my side. You want to see the champ defend. You want to see the champ Move. like compete. And uh, where, where you have know. you been the last three weeks? I've been. Yeah. Right. Hey, my, right. My Rob, Rob. Yeah, right. Where has he been the last three years? To, no doubt. <laughs> right. I mean, hey, talk to you. Talk to you, boy. All, all, all we have talked about since we've known each other. The, the very time we met. 
was the conversation with Pro Wrestling Illustrated about the sanctity of the championship. But I've got to say, how we pretend like I didn't see like the last few weeks of NWA Power watching it on my TV uh, right there on Tuesday night with 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 Trevor Murdoch like trying to just get his shot at Chris Adonis for the national title. You dangling the ten pounds of gold in front of his face. Let me ask you this, Gary. Let me ask you this, Gary. Gary, This this isn't an all you need. This isn't all you can eat buffet. I know you're familiar with them, but this ain't what it is. All right, pick one or the other. Do you want to be the national Gary. champion or do you want to be the world champion? I'm just saying no, you're, no, you're, no. it's Go not ahead. that, that no, no, it's okay, offer, you Go offered ahead. it try, to him. Try for the national championship, and if that doesn't work out, you can try for the world championship. What? No. Hey, what you're hey, saying, you wanna, Gary. Hey, you want to hey, you wanna risk it all? Go all in? I know a thing or two about that. But, but hey, make a decision. Put your cards hey, on Gary, the table. You want- you won't be having until Chris Adonis vacates the national title to enter the Battle Royal. That's what you want. I just want Nick Aldis to acknowledge the Battle Royal happening. Also, it not to happening. deny a promoted main event of the tag team titles. I, I, want, I want the tag team championships to be defended against the number one contenders as it's supposed to be and not somebody sticking their nose in the middle of it hey, saying like hey. i've got a better idea if you want a, if you want things done the way they're supposed to be there's someone else that you need to be talking to and it's not me and you know who it is and you're just afraid to you're afraid to speak no, up no you're the guy who was just worried, talking about how not fair worried. the battle royal was and this and this is very telling i figured this out Stinson, because this is, this is this is what i've come to this is what i'm realizing here and now is it because based on what you were saying before oh billy's the one writing the checks billy's the one paying for stuff billy this and billy that but this is what i've come to realize is that you're afraid to speak truth to power because you're worried that he's going to take this this all away from mm-hmm. you aren't you you're worried that he's going to take your take your little meal ticket away so instead you're going oh good idea billy oh yeah it makes perfect sense to to exclude the champions from being in a Championship number one contender about Royal. Yeah, yeah, good idea. No, I think it's totally fine. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, it's a very, very yeah, very interesting. Corporate shill. Yep. I never had you down for a corporate shill. What about but, that mm. is just so hard to grasp that he want? I mean, these these guys all have. I mean, I don't know. It just it, but, it well, worked out uh, for clearly, me. Well, like they've guess, all got a pass guess, to the I championship. I guess it's easy for you to grasp because you don't understand sports, but. You know, typically what you do is you rise through the ranks. You sort of, you win against a certain level and then you go up another level and then you go up another level and another level and so on and so forth. You don't All just of these men were on about, a path to rise through just, the ranks. Nah, 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 they nah, didn't nah. need you nah, nah, interfering. Nah, nah. You, don't just, you don't just mill about on, you don't just mill about typing cool things on Twitter and making funny hashtags and then next thing you know, oh, I could be in the Battle Royal and be the number one contender. Look at me, I'm funny. Uh, it'd be real funny when you lose in two minutes and nobody buys the next pay-per-view. Chris so Adonis had a, a ticket he can punch right there. Pope minutes. is on his way. He is almost at the best of seven. And no by God, I hope you honor nobody, it if he gets that lucky seven. And, and then Tom Latimer could be a tag team champion. He could be right there. And I get it. Yes, you want the world championship. But maybe he's also like, hey, my buddy's on top right now. Let me let me take this gold. Strictly Business could be the most dominant force in professional wow. wrestling. But because wow. of the meddling of Nick Aldis, none of that's happening. Like it's just or, or he's going, wow, you know, I've been tag team champion before and I've and I've been saying and other people have been saying that it's about time that I got my due and it doesn't and and the fact that my buddy is the world champion, the greatest world champion of the modern era shouldn't hold me back from trying to chase my dreams of being the world champion either. And maybe I said, I agree. And maybe we said, you know what? I want you to be the number one contender because you and I will tear the house down and the best man wins. And we'll know, we will know that whoever wins that match would be the best of the best in the NWA. Nay, the entire professional wrestling business, Gary Horn. I don't, mm. by the way, I think that that is the ultimate that, main event of a show. That, don't get me wrong, but just in that, in that 30 seconds, I just explained everything to something that even a corporate shill keyboard warrior, Corgan sympathizer, like you can understand now, if you excuse me, I've had two workouts today. These guns don't fuel themselves. That belt doesn't shine itself. And I got to go eat. That's right. Well, we're grateful for the champ. 
showing up on the show tonight. Uh, I just want to say thanks to the Bearded Trio for backing me up on that. <laughs> no, you don't look to me. Don't look to me for backing up. Man. Hey, there's uh, I can do a lot of things, but uh, go toe to toe in a war of words with the uh, the real world's champ is not one of them. So my apologies, dude. But I, I... That what? One. Uh, Doc, you were ever ever the oldest fanatic. So congratulations on that. I'm I just I just call it right down the line, man. It's been this way since I don't know, probably 2019 for me that uh, he's there. But uh, hopefully, you guys in the chat. I mean, we'll throw to you real quick as the last few minutes we've got here on the show. We've gone way over what we uh, uh, meant to. And uh, Ryan Romano saying we'd pay money to see you, Mister Aldis, no matter the challenger. Um, well, I, I feel like that sort of solidifies my argument is that whoever won the battle royal anyway would have been fine. And um, the um lots of people talking trash about uh corgan here thanks to aldis we're talking trash about aldis in favor of corgan that's uh this is good this is good you want to tear this thing apart that's that's perfect um anyway um nick aldis getting his ham sandwich on says eric dale magnitude says nick aldis the real world champion Stan says, total respect, Doc Stinson. Um, yes, sir. Yes, sir. The Alliance blog is still happy that Aldis thinks about him from time to time. That's good. <laughs> and uh, uh, Randy laughing at our toe-to-toe -to -toe of the war awards. I know that I got buried. I expect that now every time the champ shows up. We still let him in. He, uh, he Gary, flexes those guns. I am not going to back down. I mean, I'm not, I'm not in a fist fight with him, which I definitely lose. You, and, uh, you called him a bully, man. You called him a bully. It's like calling Tom Brady a bully because he's per, the perennial most successful quarterback in the NFL. I mean, you can't call Nick Aldis a bully. He had, everything he said was on point. You had no clear answer. It, in this business, every single person that comes into this industry does it because they want to wear that championship belt that he has. And that's the only reason the tag team belts are great. They're the greatest tag team prize in the world, but nobody gets into it. Very few people. I'm not going to say nobody, but most people get into it because they want the ultimate prize. And that's what he was trying to explain. And every decision that he made, I think he conclusively demonstrated to you that it was in the interest of protecting and upholding the dignity of that trophy and that trophy alone. He is. He does Back not make the, the decisions in the NWA. Back to the chat. Uh, Nick Aldis, the real world champion, says magnitude. Stan says glad. Glad you got to go over Gary. Thank you. I'm glad. I don't know if that's what that was, but thank you. Sean Mega says Gary, you was 100 percent right. I like to think that, but I appreciate the sentiment. I think it's Too good to be you true. Were 45. 100 percent right. Gary made this memorable. Thank you. Gary has Aldis PTSD. Eric Dale, yes, that is <laughs> true. That that's going to be that's accurate. Every time I, I get I like, I'm starting to twitch a little every time I see him now. Um, Alliance Block, do you think he could put in a good word for me? I've got an opening on my podcast. DM him on Twitter. Um, <laughs> yeah, for uh, uh, yeah, front row says this, uh, Gordian knot of logic. Yeah, there was it was that's nice. Nice, uh, I like the nice, front, row, uh, front row is clever. We could we could give him that. He's a, um, he's a fellow Presbyterian. You may not know this about me <laughs> or him, but we are uh, <laughs> we are both Presbyterians. So, Ryan, uh, I see yeah. I see you talking about Pope making it to the lucky number seven. I don't know if you caught that at the end that I brought up the Pope. He said, "Ain't nobody talking about the Pope." So, but I think I feel like that's a whole other hurdle we're gonna get to when it's time. And uh, I think he meant I think he meant in this context because he's a champion and therefore he's not eligible. Don't try to put words in the champ's mouth. All right. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for being here. It's 830. This is longer than a normal episode. And uh, I appreciate you all being witness to my uh, my being pummeled publicly on live live YouTube right here in front of you all. Mm -hmm. Um, we just got to get Gary in this battle royal now. Yeah, that's probably not <laughs> that's a good what, idea. Either. That's what the people hey, want to see. He, 
he meets the only criteria, which is you're not one of the top guys. You're not a champion, and therefore you you qualify. Uh, anyway, seriously, thank you so much for being here. We appreciate you all. Uh, we are This Is Pro Wrestling, and if you like interactions like this, you like these kind of arguments, trust me, we all three get into them regularly over at This Is Pro Wrestling. And even sometimes we have people on. If you haven't checked out the show, uh, Tom Latimer was just on the show. So you know I have a soft spot in my heart for him and everything he's doing. Same with uh, Matthew Mims, who was just on the show uh, for an interview. And they're great interviews. And I don't mean that as like a bragging uh, thing. I mean it as a, those guys are fantastic talents and they deserve recognition. And you should definitely go check them out at TIPW show on all the social media, um, youtube.com slash this is pro wrestling. Anything else you guys wanted to add before we wrap this thing up? Nope. It's good. Right. Good talk. I hope, I hope we demonstrated how to have good, healthy, civil, uh, disagreement and discourse. You know, these are my best buds. We're going to hang up. We're going to hang out for a couple more hours and just talk, shoot the bull. We love each other, even though both of these two guys are wrong about a lot of stuff. I still love them. I'm still uh, happy that you guys hung out with us tonight. We'll do it again next Tuesday. Yeah. Um, Eric Dale, um, if I'm welcome back in GPB, if, if all this is as much pull as he says, I don't know that I'll ever be back there again. But we'll see. And uh, we, we thank you guys so much for being here. We love you guys. Keep watching NWA Power. Tune in with us on the Tuesday night post shows at 7.05. And again, you never know who's going to show up and what's going to happen. I think tonight was a perfect example of that. Uh, so thanks for listening. And until next time, enjoy your gravy cake.